Hello, everyone, and welcome to week eight of this unit. So we're going to start off with the unit by discussing the structure of the body paragraph. So after writing the formative assessment for the introduction, we're going to discuss what should be mentioned in your body paragraph and what structure are we going to abide to. Obviously, we're going to abide to peel, but our peel will be doubled. So P-E-E-E-E-L. Why double E? Because we will be providing two examples and two explanations, one from text A and one from text B. So make sure you review the TSR because in the TSR, we indicate that both, um, that they should be clearly evident there. Okay, so I attach the TSR again. Make sure you review it. Obviously, some words have been changed. So we're not going to be focusing on your speaking skills anymore. It's going to be on writing and we're going to move, remove the final strand. So I'm going to open this on the board and show you how it's slightly different than the one that we did for speak uh, for the presentation. OK, and obviously, after introducing the body paragraph, Masima and myself always provide a sample. And how do we do so? We're going to write one with you all. Uh, this will be considered as triple P's or guided writing for you have a proper understanding of the body paragraph. Obviously, the body paragraph that we're going to write will be nothing related to the one that you're being assessed on for your formative. Once we're done with this, you are going to continue with your formative assessment. You're going to use your introduction. You may amend it if you'd like before you write the body paragraph, but don't forget. The body paragraph will the body paragraph will be two to three body paragraphs. So make sure that you uh, divide your times uh, divide your time in an effective manner so that you do not rush and your sentences uh, don't make sense or your um, grammatical punctuation and writing errors increase in general. Okay. After we're done with the body paragraph, we're going to give a break before we introduce the intro the conclusion. And we are going to research what are Inuit myths. So if you notice until now, just to make sure that you have a good understanding, we started off with Greek mythology, then we moved to Japanese, and now we're going to Inuit. So make sure you dedicate some time to watch the video just to understand the lives of Inuit people and um what can we categorize them into? I would say that they are hunter-gatherers. Maybe you'd like to research why they're considered hunter-gatherers before we begin with the blind boy and the loon. Because it's an Inuit myth, you should show me and prove to me that it is an Inuit myth. Don't forget, this could be an example in the buddy paragraph. Uh, you can talk about how the cultures are different and you need to provide examples and explain how the cultures are different based on the setting, perhaps. Okay? If you have any questions, don't hesitate and send me an email.